To talk some hockey, we bring in our pal Rangers reporter John Giannone. The video call center finds John off of I-87 in Central Valley, New York. John, what in the world are you doing there? <laughs> A little shopping before vacation, Billy, and uh, they call it an outlet mall, so you sort of to feel like you're getting a good deal, but I'm on my third credit card already, so that, that's still up for debate. You're looking in like midsummer form. You got the tan going. There's been no sun at all here. You, why are you looking so great so early here? We had one five hour span of sun in the last month, and I happened to be on a golf course then, so that's what this is. And then genetics is the rest. All right, John, looking good, and so too is Capo Caco. In the World Championships, in his first game for Finland against Slovakia, had a hat trick. He has, he has five goals in his first three games. Any chance at all with the Devils at number one and the Rangers, of course, number two in the draft, that Capo becomes the number one overall pick, you think? It's become the interesting question of the NHL draft. I don't think so, Billy, because I still think, you know, even though Jack Hughes turns 18 today, the fact of the matter is it's still the body of work. And while this Capo Caco kid is going to be superb, and certainly translates to being a franchise player and certainly a franchise scorer. I still think the body of work of what Jack Hughes has done in his junior career is still going to make him the most appealing for the Devils. I mean, what you see here from Capo Caco in this international championship right now against NHL caliber and NHL players has certainly been special. And I think as this progresses, Capo Caco might be more NHL ready at the moment than Jack Hughes is, but I think as it translates over the course of five years, ten years, a whole career, I still see the Devils taking Jack Hughes as number one and then Caco two to the Rangers. But doesn't it ultimately set up as the greatest no-brainer draft pick in NHL history for the Rangers? Whoever the Devils don't take is who the Rangers are going to take. Yeah, Rangers in a great spot for sure. So if it is Capo Caco, you're a part of all of our broadcasts. You do such a great job as always night after night in the locker room are you concerned with the pronunciation consistently of capo caco we will make sure that come opening night of the preseason his name is pronounced properly every single time we say it and i, I would imagine from his perspective and the rangers say it however you want if he's scoring two goals a night right uh john and when you look at the rangers so far this summer they got adam fox you got Shesterkin and Kravtsov coming over from overseas. When you look at how this has evolved, as well as a number two overall draft pick, and I don't think at this point it could have gone much better for Jeff Gordon and company. And you know what, Billy? It shapes up as being not only a fascinating training camp with all these young, talented players coming into Westchester to train for the Rangers. I also am really intrigued by what it's going to do to Jeff Gordon's mindset and to the organization's mindset this summer, especially starting July 1st when free agency starts, because obviously the Rangers' mindset was to rebuild. They're now in year two of that mindset after what happened late last year after the trade deadline and then this year at the trade deadline as well. But when you get that number two pick and then you sign Kravtsov if he's able to play in the NHL this year, and then you're able to sign Adam Fox to address what David Quinn, the head coach, said was the most important element, which was we have to get better defensively. You take all that in the mix, and now all of a sudden, maybe this draft isn't so much, or maybe this future isn't so much about what are we going to do two years from now or three years from now as what are we going to do two months from now. You know, maybe the Rangers on July 1st look to make a bigger splash than they otherwise would have. Do they show more interest in Eric Carlson or Tyler Myers or two top flight defensive players who will be unrestricted free agents. Do they throw money at Duchesne? Do they revisit Kevin Hayes? Players like that. So I wonder really as much as this influx of talent who are 19, 20 years old, whether the Rangers actually change their mindset slightly and spend slightly more in unrestricted free agency. John, you've been covering the league for years and years. What is your thought when you look especially at this year's playoffs about why regular season success is not predictive of postseason success? Billy, it happens often. You know, I mean, it's been a long time since the President's Trophy champion won the Stanley Cup. It doesn't happen very much at all. And John Cooper said it after his team, the Tampa Bay Lightning, which was a runaway champion in the regular season, was unceremoniously swept in the first round. And I buy into the theory. When you play NHL-level hockey every night, and then you have to ratchet it up to playoff NHL hockey level. If you haven't played with that intensity and that speed level for months on end, like the Tampa Bay Lightning didn't, and just went out there and threw their sticks out there and their talent got them by most nights, 
it's really hard to create that when you haven't had that for that long. And you look at the teams that advanced. The Boston Bruins were playing right to the end of the regular season for home ice advantage against uh, Toronto, which worked out perfectly for them because they needed it in round one. And then you look at the wild card teams. All four of them got into the second round, and now we see two of them in the in the final four, basically, in the in the conference finals. They were playing for something every single night down the stretch of the season. So they were playing at an NHL caliber speed and intensity and purpose that I just don't think division champions or conference champions play with nearly enough. And to me, it's what separates the NHL playoffs from every other sport is the fact that as long as you're in it, and it is a cliche, but it's true. You have a team that was in last place in the entire league on January 1st. The Rangers beat the Blues in St. Louis on New Year's Eve. That put the Blues in last overall in the league, and then they end up going to the Final Four in the NHL. It's a remarkable achievement, but it really does show the importance of those second-half games in carrying it forward to the postseason. All right, John, awesome stuff as always. Thanks so much for joining us, and hey, don't spend too much money when you go back inside, all right? <laughs> Good luck to that. Thanks, Billy. For more great videos from the MSG 150, check out our right there. And remember, our show is on Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10.30 p.m. on MSG Network and MSG Go.